Following on in my traffic video series, today I'm talking about some of the most serious penalties under the Highway Code. Some people have said in the comments that the Highway Code is not law and it's not enforceable, but as you'll remember from my previous video, the Highway Code, whilst a lot of it is guidance, a lot of it is also backed up by legislation, and there are a table of penalties associated with various offences arising out of the rules of the Highway Code. So break some of these rules and you may not only find yourself with penalty points on your driving licence, but you may also face a fine, discretionary or mandatory disqualification, and at worst, imprisonment in various offences. And as a bonus today, you're going to see me take a mock theory test, so make sure you stay till the end of the video. And just before we get going, I have some exciting news for you. I am launching my website, blackbeltbarrister.com, where I'm bringing you exclusive courses and content based on all the skills of being a barrister. Everything from interview skills, writing skills, letter writing skills, writing arguments for court, writing your pleadings for court, letters of claim, how to represent yourself in court, and even how to study for your exams to get the top marks. I have a first class law degree, a distinction master in laws, and a distinction at bar school. And of course, as you all know, I'm a practicing barrister. So check out the website in the link below, and now on with the video. So starting out with some offenses that appear effectively at the bottom of the table in level of seriousness, I don't want to encourage you that these are not serious because actually they are. They can cause serious injuries, so they should all be taken seriously. First of all, with seatbelt offences, whilst they don't incur penalty points on your driving licence, they might incur a £500 fine. Now remember, the driver is always responsible for their own seatbelt, and they are also responsible for anyone else under the age of 14. So seatbelts are very important because if you do have a collision and someone in your vehicle does not have a seatbelt, there are very, very serious injuries, and it is one of the most frequent causes of death. So please guys, wear your seatbelts and make sure your children in the back are wearing their seatbelts. Next actually follows on for one of the questions in the comments as to whether there's any real punishment for cyclists cycling on the pavement. And there is, it's in the highway code, it's a 500 pounds fine. Now obviously this won't be dished out at every incident of a cyclist on the pavement, but it will almost certainly be issued if the cyclist causes an injury to someone else on the pavement when the cyclist shouldn't be there. This can also escalate into careless cycling. Yes, there is careless cycling in addition to careless driving. This will escalate the fine to a thousand pounds. So if you get a cyclist that comes rushing past you and assuming some officer who has the authority to issue the fine catches them, there will be a thousand pound fine for careless cycling. This can escalate even further to dangerous cycling. So there is both careless and dangerous cycling as well as careless and dangerous driving, which you may not have heard of. This will escalate the fine to two and a half thousand pounds for the cyclist. Now obviously this is going to be in a situation where the cyclist has caused severe danger to one or many more other people whilst out cycling, wherever that might be, and attracts a two and a half thousand pound fine. Now onto some offences that attract a discretionary disqualification. If any of you have ever been caught speeding, you may also receive what's known as a section 172 notice. This is a notice to you, the keeper of the vehicle, to identify the driver at a given time and place. And failure to do so will attract a thousand pound fine and a discretionary disqualification. Now it's no good to just say that you don't know who was driving. You have to demonstrate that you could not have found out who it was with reasonable diligence. So if it's just you and your spouse or partner that shares a vehicle and you simply say you can't remember who was driving, that by itself is not likely to be enough. Magistrates have heard this time and time again, and routinely they don't accept it. If you're found to be driving your car with no MOT certificate, this might attract a thousand pound fine. Although this doesn't yet attract penalty points on your driving license, because it's less to do with your driving than the standard of the vehicle. If you're caught for a traffic light offence, this is typically going through on red or dangerously close to red, which frankly I see all too often. This might not only attract three points on your driving license, but also a thousand pound fine and again, a discretionary disqualification. Moving on to speeding, there's a lot of discretion open if the case goes to court. Obviously, if you get a fixed penalty, you will get the standard three points and a hundred pound fine, but if the case goes to court, it could be far more serious. In court, you might be looking anywhere from three to six penalty points, 
a thousand pounds fine or two and a half thousand pounds if it's a motorway offence and again a discretionary disqualification period. If you are driving a vehicle otherwise than in accordance with your licence this might include driving any vehicle that is not permitted on your licence. You will be looking at three to six penalty points on your driving licence, a thousand pound fine and again a discretionary disqualification. Now moving on to using a mobile phone whilst driving. Now remember, driving doesn't necessarily mean you are moving at the time. As I've said in previous videos, this would almost certainly apply if you are just sitting in stationary traffic and your engine is still running, or even if you've turned the engine off, but you are still in traffic and you are effectively in charge of that vehicle, you're effectively driving because you're on the road. It may even apply if you are parked up along the side of the road, even though you're not driving at the time. It is always a matter of degrees, but ultimately it is best not to be using that mobile phone unless you make it clear to anyone around you that you are not driving. In other words, you should pull over, you should turn the engine off. I would personally even take the keys out before I make a phone call. Because using a handheld mobile phone whilst driving will attract six penalty points on your driving license and a thousand pound fine. And this will increase to two and a half thousand pounds if it is a passenger carrying vehicle or a goods vehicle. And again, a discretionary disqualification. Now with any of these offence penalties that carry six points, remember that if you've already totted up six points on your driving licence, maybe for minor offences such as speeding, fixed penalties and so on, then an additional six points for using your mobile phone is going to top this up to 12 in which case you're going to be sent to court and the court is obliged to ban you because if you've accrued 12 points within a three year period, the court is obliged to ban you for a minimum period of six months unless you can show exceptional hardship. And that does not mean to say that you are going to find it difficult to get to work and earn money. You would have to show that all of the consequences taken together means that someone else is going to be put under or perhaps you are going to be put under exceptional hardship if you are disqualified from driving. This is not an easy thing to overcome, so please take these offences seriously, especially when they carry six points. With autumn and winter coming and leaves and snow are going to start falling, if you don't have proper control over your vehicle and a full view of the road ahead, you could be looking at three points on your driving licence and up to a thousand pounds fine. And again, this goes up to two and a half thousand pounds for passenger carrying vehicles and goods vehicles. And need I say it, again, a discretionary disqualification. Now it goes without saying that your vehicle should not be used in a dangerous condition. But if your vehicle is found to be dangerous in one way or another, you can expect three points on your driving license for each case of something that is found to be dangerous and a fine of up to two and a half thousand pounds. Although if you are driving a large goods vehicle or a passenger carrying vehicle, the fine is unlimited. As for disqualification, this is when it starts to get a little bit more serious. If you are convicted of this offence within three years of the same or a similar offence, there is an obligatory disqualification for a minimum period of six months. Otherwise, the disqualification is, again, discretionary. If you are found to be driving without insurance, this is taken very seriously by the courts. Why? Because driving with insurance is a minimum prerequisite of driving and your insurance is designed to protect other road users at a minimum. Hence, a minimum of third party insurance is required. If you are found to be driving without insurance and are taken to court, you'll be looking at between six and eight penalty points on your driving license. This time the fine is unlimited and again a discretionary disqualification. Now this offence might sound like something that you think you'll never be caught on the wrong side of. However, if you've got your insurance set to renew and it renews every year, that's perfectly fine. But what happens if the card expires and the insurance is not renewed or the insurance company changes their policy and they don't renew the insurance and you think that it has? or you simply forget to renew your insurance because year on year you go through the same process of renewing the insurance. If one year you forget and then you're in a collision and then your documents are checked and you're found to be without insurance, you might well find yourself in court on a charge of driving without insurance. So please check and make sure your insurance is always up to date. So now we start to get a little bit more serious still. If you are found to be driving after refusal or revocation of your driving license on medical grounds, not only will you be looking at three to six points on your driving license, but you will also be looking at an unlimited fine, a discretionary disqualification, 
and up to six months imprisonment. Similarly, if you're found to be driving whilst disqualified, you'll be looking at six points on your driving license, an unlimited fine, a discretionary disqualification, and up to six months imprisonment, although this is 12 months in Scotland. The next offence is one that many people get caught out on, but that has serious consequences, and that is failing to stop after an accident or failing to report an accident. Now, it's quite obvious that if there's a relatively serious accident that everyone is going to stop exchange details and report it to the police, particularly if a number of people are injured. But it is the minimum obligation upon you that catches a lot of people out. The full offence is detailed in section 170 of the Road Traffic Act 1988. But the simple version is this. If you are in an accident whilst driving and as a result of that accident there is damage to property other than your own or an injury to someone other than yourself, then you must, as a minimum, number one, stop. This one's quite obvious. Two, you must provide your details to any person with reasonable grounds for requiring those details, usually the other person, but perhaps any police officer and so on. Thirdly, if for any reason you cannot provide those details, and this usually occurs when there is no one else there, which I'm gonna come back to in a moment, then you must report this accident to the police as soon as practicable and in any event within 24 hours. So why does this catch so many people out? Taking one such simple example of parking in a car park and you happen to collide just a little bit with the car next to you and there's a very minor mark on that vehicle. You get out and inspect the damage and you think it's not too bad, but there's no one else around to provide your details to. You think to yourself, in the absence of anyone else around, you cannot give your details to them, so you get back in your car and drive off. Now, if there is CCTV in that car park and the owner comes back of the other vehicle, notices the mark, contacts the shop, requests the CCTV, locates your vehicle, gets your registration number, they report it to the police. The next thing you know, you are being charged with an offence for failing to stop or report an accident under Section 170 of the Road Traffic Act. Now, whilst, as I said, in the more serious accidents, it's fairly obvious you're going to exchange details, but in this very simplistic example here, if all of those things unfold and you are reported and you are brought to court, you are looking at between five to 10 penalty points on your driving license, perhaps an unlimited fine, perhaps a discretionary disqualification, and in the most serious of cases, up to six months imprisonment. Moving on to some of the more serious offenses, driving whilst unfit through drink or drugs, or failing to provide a specimen. You will be looking at three to 11 points on your driving license in exceptional cases where you are not disqualified. Of course, as you might expect, an unlimited fine, an obligatory disqualification, and depending on the seriousness, up to six months imprisonment. For careless and inconsiderate driving, you're looking at three to nine points on your driving license, an unlimited fine and a discretionary disqualification. For dangerous driving, you're looking at three to 11 points on your driving license, again, in the exceptional case that you're not disqualified, an unlimited fine, an obligatory disqualification, and this time up to two years imprisonment, depending on the circumstances. Now, the next offenses that carry the same penalty are causing death by dangerous driving or careless driving under the influence of drink or drugs. These carry between 3 to 11 points on your driving license, again in the exceptional case that you're not disqualified, an unlimited fine, an obligatory disqualification for a minimum period of two years, and 14 years imprisonment. So that is obviously not an exhaustive list of all the penalties contained within the Highway Code, just a broad summary of some of the less serious to the most severe. But for those of you that were not sure that the Highway Code is in fact backed up by law, hopefully this sheds some light on it. And now for the entertaining part of the video, you get to see me take a test. Let's go. Test your skills button pops up. We offer a mock theory test to check how prepared you are for the DVSA theory exam. So as a barrister, I should be pretty good at this test, you would think. Let's give it a try. Okay, so it's uh, onedriver.co.uk, free theory test. You're following a long vehicle as it approaches a crossroads. What do you do if it signals left but moves out to the right? Well, even without reading the answers, I would say that you should keep well back and see what happens. So get closer in order to pass it quickly. Uh, stay well back and give it room. Yes, that's going to be the one. Assume the signal is wrong <laughs> and that it's turning right. Overtake it as it starts to slow down. Right, okay, let's go with that one, shall we? What should you do when you're following a learner driver who stalls at a junction? 
well obviously you should hang back and give it time be patient as you expect them to make some mistakes yeah that's probably it stay very close behind and flash your headlights start to rev your engine if they take too long to restart immediately steer around them and drive on okay next you're driving past a line of parked cars. What should you do if a ball bounces out in the road ahead? Obviously, you should stop immediately because you're going to expect a child coming out, right? Let's see what the answers suggest. Continue driving at the same speed and sound your horn. Continue driving at the same speed and flash your lights. Right, okay. Slow down and be prepared to stop for children. Yeah, it's likely that one. Stop and wave the children across to fetch their ball. Now, you won't do this one because you're not going to wave the children into the road. What action should you take when you see flashing amber lights under a school warning sign? Well, obviously, you should be expecting children to come across, so reduce the speed until you clear the area. Keep up your speed and sound the horn. <laughs> Increase your speed to clear the area quickly. Wait at the lights until they stop flashing. Well, obviously, reduce your speed until you're clear of the area because you can't just wait at the lights if there's obviously you can't just wait at the lights so let's go with that one shall we what should you do when you see these horse riders in front pull out into the middle of the road slow down and be prepared to stop switch on your hazard warning lights give a right turn signal well obviously you should be slowing down and be ready to stop Powered vehicles used by disabled people are small and can be hard to see. What must they display if they're traveling on a dual carriageway? Flashing red beacon, flashing green beacon, flashing blue beacon, or flashing amber beacon? But it's not going to be red, green, or blue. Green is for doctors, blue is for emergencies, red is also used for emergencies, and it's going to be amber. What is the most vulnerable road user? A car driver? A tractor driver, a lorry driver, or a motorcyclist? Well, obviously a motorcyclist. You're following a cyclist. What should you do when you wish to turn left a short distance ahead? Overtake the cyclist before you reach the junction. Pull alongside the cyclist and stay level until after the junction. Hold back until the cyclist has passed the junction or go around the cyclist on the junction. <laughs> well, as it's a short distance ahead, you should hold back until the cyclist has passed the junction. As you approach a pelican crossing, the lights change to green. What should you do if older people are still crossing? Oh, I can see it coming already. Wave them across as quickly as they can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, rev your engine to make them hurry. Flash your lights in case they haven't noticed you. Or wait patiently until they cross. Oh dear, oh dear. You're traveling behind a moped. What should you do if you want to turn left a short distance ahead? Again, the clue in the short distance ahead. Overtake the moped before the junction. Well, it's a short distance, so that would be dangerous. Pull alongside the moped and stay level, <laughs> level until just before the junction. Sound your horn as a warning and pull in front of the moped or stay behind until he's past the junction. End test. And I passed, everybody. So uh, you can be reassured that barristers can pass these things 100%. Uh, review answers. Um, and here we go. You're following a long vehicle. Of course, you stay back and give it room. Uh, we don't need the explanation. I've given you that already. Um, following a learner driver who stalls at a junction. Be patient. They make mistakes. You're driving through a line of parked cars. Of course, you should slow down and be prepared to stop for children. You don't stop. And this does ex this does warrant an explanation. I'm going to give you my own explanation here, which is stop and wave the children across. Obviously, I don't like the idea of telling anyone else what to do on the road. And in fact, you shouldn't really be doing that. So stop and wave them across. Um, you shouldn't really be stopping and waving them across slow down and be prepared to stop. In reality, I'm almost certainly likely to stop because I'm not going to take the risk because a bull is usually followed by a child. So let's see what the explanation says. Beware of children playing in the street. 
and running out in the road. If a ball bounces from the pavement, slow down and be prepared to stop. Don't encourage anyone to retrieve it. Other road users may not see your signal and might lead a child into a dangerous situation. But I would add on to there that you should you should really be almost certainly stopping. Um, I didn't choose this one because you shouldn't be waving anyone into the road. That itself might cause you some liability. But um, slow down, be prepared to stop. Yes, but I'm almost certainly likely to stop. So let's move on. Uh, flashing amber lights, of course, you reduce your speed until you're clear of the area. What do you see when you sue horse riders? Of course, again, you slow down and be prepared to stop. Some people would be tempted to say pull out into the middle of the road because if you're going to overtake them, that's what you would be doing. But when you see them, um, the question is, what should you do when you see them? Well, slow down, be prepared to stop. Then you might pull out to overtake, but only then. And uh, powered vehicles, of course, it's flashing amber. It's not any of these. Most vulnerable road user, of course, it's a motorcyclist. They're, they're the smallest and most vulnerable. You're following a cyclist. What do you do when you wish to turn left a short distance ahead? Of course, you hold back. You don't do any of those other things. As you approach a pelican crossing, of course, you wait patiently for them to cross. And you're traveling behind a moped. What do you do if you want to turn left? Of course, again, you stay behind until he's past the junction. So there we go with the test. That was fun. So that's all for today. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to join me on Sunday for the live stream. And remember, stay humble and subscribe.